Let's hope I don't fuck this up. I haven't done this for a while. The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Jim Jesus 2, Electric Boogaloo, coming to a theater near you. No rights reserved, but all mites reserved. And I'm here with Matt Pritchard, and I'm, of course, Jim Jesus. How you doing, man? I am doing good. <laughs> we are doing well. Grammar, grammar Nazi in the house. Good. Um, I'm I'm out doing deeds and saving people. <laughs> uh, and getting swole at the same time. How is that going, by the way? Since I, so I've been saving for a move recently and was uh, picked up some some bartending shifts at this old restaurant I used to work at. In addition to my my day job, my training fell entirely apart. <laughs> so I lost twenty pounds and eight weeks which sucked <laughs> and you lost 20 pounds uh, of muscle not 20 pounds of fat it, muscle and fat but okay. i don't know what the actual you know I, I don't have the exact breakdown of my body composition and how many you know <laughs> how much muscle fiber i actually lost or anything but, but i mean like um, generally speaking I mean, when you're saying like i it sucks that i lost 20 pounds you're saying that you mostly lost muscle mass more than i mean because you'd be glad if you'd lost fat right yeah, I mean, I did lose some fat, which okay. was cool, but I've stopped caring about body fat. Like, obviously, like, I, if I started getting, like, obese or something, I would clamp that down. Uh, but <laughs> I'm really just more concerned with getting strong rather than... Uh, it's like aesthetics kind of come as a result of getting strong for me as opposed to, like, I'm not doing, like, bodybuilding exercises or anything like that. No, no bro splits or, you know, trying to just trying to get literally swole. I'm just I'm chasing numbers. Okay, so... As long as you're not forgetting leg day, you'll be all right. Um, <laughs> day, man. Squat every single day. <laughs> yeah. So I, I could. I haven't done an episode of the Lulberts in, I think it's been over a month. I think the last episode was on the 27th of last month, August 2018, of course. Um, I did do an interview with Gra uh, Graham Smith from Voluntarious Japan, and I put that up on the Lulberts link. Um, but mostly I've been kind of more active on YouTube lately. Um, and I've even kind of scratched out the former part on my Twitter bio that said I'm a former YouTuber. Hmm. So uh, I'm getting back into that. So you're that. back to being a, a, a full on YouTuber. Yeah. And I'm actually getting into live streams. And, uh, I was just talking to someone about this the other day that I've been making some bit of money doing live streams and, um, getting super chats. After I got off the phone, I checked my YouTube account. My whole entire channel has been completely demonetized because it says that I had been uploading other people's content. <laughs> that was the excuse. <laughs> Not that it was copyrighted content. They didn't care about that. They were just upset that there was just too much on my channel that was re-uploaded content from other people. And I think that what did it was uh, I, I posted a, like, a seven-second clip of Michael Malice's new podcast, which we're going to talk about, uh, where he's interviewing uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe, and he asked him the most pressing question of our time. And uh, I think that's the name of the title, uh, the title of the video. And I think I think that's what did it. They just saw that I linked back to another video. There was content from that video in that video, and they just said, look, there's just too much of your channel because I have YouTube poops. I have uh, You're clips. spam. Yeah, I have clips of other things, which I kind of edit to try to show something or whatever. So I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm going to – instead of like going through my channel and pro like hide, uh, hiding those videos and – all that other stuff. I'd rather just keep all that stuff up because I think what I have up there is either important or funny or worth keeping up uh, if it's not already taken down. I'm just going to start a new YouTube channel. So I started a new two YouTube channel, and it's called Jim Jesus 2 Electric Boogaloo. I'll link to it in the <laughs> show notes. And uh, that's where I'm just going to do everything from now on. I have two subscribers. I'm starting fresh, which is going to be nice. If I do have to upload content, that's going to have other people's stuff on it. I'm going to do it there. No more clips from movies and stuff at the beginning of the Lulberts done with that right because I'm just I'm just not gonna not gonna risk this anymore <laughs> which sucks that I have to start all over again but that's this is what we're dealing with right now uh, exactly it's so weird how much different YouTube is now than it used to be I'm mm -hmm. not just talking about like you know how like our uh, kind of and cap and kind of the political philosophy YouTube has changed considerably, but just literally YouTube itself mm -hmm. and uh, how engagement works now is just, it's very, very different. Yeah. From yeah. what I understand. <laughs> and I really do want to talk a little bit about the state, the state of a union, the state of the union when it comes to um, YouTube politics, especially in the ANCAP sphere, because it, it has definitely changed. 
Whereas like the other channels or the other types of ideologies, they've been growing like crazy. Um, I'm, I'm seeing much higher quality coming out of everybody. I mean, everybody, um, not just, you know, the mainstream. Of course, you have like the liberals and the conservatives. They're producing like higher quality content. You know, they're they're putting out like high quality stuff. I'm not saying like their arguments or their political philosophy is any good. I'm just saying that, like they're using like yeah. proper studios and, you know, they're they're arguing for things that, you know, that seem that, you know, that are they're wrong. But it seems, you know, they're they're trying to do things diligently. Whereas the ANCAP sphere, not so much. It is it is a, a sad, sad state of affairs. And um, um, yeah. I w- yeah, I wonder if that's they don't care enough to actually try and make this good content, or if they're afraid of being demonetized and shut down. Um. um. I, I yeah, don't like know. did did Molyneux get taken down, or no. is he just uh, he's he's got some some strikes like community guideline strikes I think. Yeah, he had a couple of strikes that were put on his channel. I guess there was a big he he started like this big campaign to push YouTube to get them removed, and they were removed. And I made a video saying like honestly, if he if he if his account gets shut down, I'm not going to shed any tears. If it mm. was anybody else, anybody else, even people right. that I hate. Um, I remember there was a YouTuber that I that I'm still at odds with. If he loses his YouTube channel over something like posting another video about David Hogg, like I will be upset about that because that's kind of fucked up. But Molyneux doesn't give a shit about free speech. I mean, this guy like DMCA'd people who were critics of him. He like doxed somebody who was like a moderator of a forum that was critical of him. Like he really doesn't give a shit about free speech like at all. He's using government guns to shut people up. And that was kind of like my point of it. Like he, he violated YouTube's terms of service by filing like illegal and uh, fraudulent DMCAs, which it says on the YouTube service. Like it says when you're do- filing these things, if you file false DMCAs, your account will be shut down. And here we are. His, his channel's still up. So I was just saying like if his, if you know, his channel gets shut down, I'm not going to lose any sleep. Probably should be shut down, but I'm, I'm like, totally against having his, you or his other stuff shut down, like Twitter and Facebook and stuff. Um, but anyways, that aside, um, even he, he, he seems to be stepping back from the anarcho capitalist stuff and he seems to be more kind of playing it up to conservatives. Cause that's where his money is right now. That's where all of his mm-hmm. money's coming from. So he kind of, talks about like oh western civilization it's going down and we need to ramp up immigration controls and he has people on like oh geez i think he has bill whittle on his channel a lot he has like you know your basic run of the mill conservatives on a lot he's got like all kind of like new right kind of thinkers on quite a bit excuse me and so like he's he's kind of playing it up to that kind of aspect um Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people kind of like a lot of libertarians have kind of written him off and he's got a whole new base of audience. So, um, and so it's changed considerably. Yeah. And honestly, it seems like like beyond, cause we've talked about this before, uh, when he really made the shift after that Trayvon video, um, and how he brought in like this whole new kind of audience demographic, mm-hmm. his, uh, his like, I, ideas his tone though and just even the way that he tent seems a lot different than it used to be and part of that could just because be because it's you know time and and i do think it's fair to say that people's ideas change over time a lot yeah. of a, a lot of us have had that happen um but it was a v- very odd timing when it happened <laughs> yeah well I, I i don't know if it's really so much that i mean that i'm sure played a role i think that may have helped guide him to that route but I think once he started noticing that libertarians uh, were getting upset with him over the DMCA thing, I think that's when he really that's when he really did a hard steer because he was already kind of turning that way. I remember he made a couple of videos where he was like, I'm still looking into race and IQ. And I was like, "Uh oh, something's happening here. Uh, <laughs> and then the DMCA thing happened. And then it was just steer hard right. Um, and hey, if that's what he wants to do, I'm not going to begrudge him from changing his mind. But like for the longest time, he was telling his own fans to say, hey, if you know anybody who advocates any kind of state position up to and including immigration controls, uh, cut them out of your fucking family completely. Yeah, uh, it's insane. Yeah. It's and completely insane. If, if your parents took you to Sunday school, cut them out of your fucking family. 
and now he's saying like, ah, oh, Christians are, you know, they're a lot better than atheists. You know, I have no problem with religion now. It's like, oh my God. What about all these legions of people that you told to fucking cut, <laughs> cut family over this shit? <laughs> and now you're advocating it. Oops. <laughs> Oof. No refunds. Yeah, no refunds. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it's fine because most Molyneux fans are temporary. Um, but but basically what's going on elsewhere in and uh, cap communities, like there's there's a couple, but for the most part, a lot of them have left. Like that guy, T, uh, he says that he retired event, like every once in a blue moon he'll make a video. Um, Linked Unithar, I, compl- I thought he completely vanished for a while, but he just uploaded a video a couple days ago about guns. Um, so I yep. think he's back. He does that. Also, uh, speaking of YouTube and the way it's kind of changed, there's something going on um, with the algorithm uh, in the way that they're they're testing how to like whose videos show up in your feed. Um, it's like because uh, it's it's rolled out in kind of like waves and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But there was a period where uh, it was relatively recently, like he had made um, a couple of videos in a couple of months and they had never showed up in my new feed. Like it was super weird. I went to his channel to check it out and he said the same thing. Like the last time I had made a video, um, cause we're all very active on YouTube. I, you know, I check my subscriptions every day. Um, there like, he didn't see mine. Like it was, it was very bizarre. So it may, he didn't totally disappear. He makes videos much, much less frequently, but for a while there, there was definitely something going on with just the way that YouTube was, uh, doling out content to yeah. people. I know for a while, like if you put click that little bell next to someone's name, it'll alert you. So there's certain YouTubers that I that I or the most of the YouTubers I really enjoy, I'll put that on there unless they're one of those people that upload content like all of the time. Then I'll right. turn that shit the fuck off because I remember I did that with um, the Daily Wire just so I can get alerted when uh, uh, you know Ben Shapiro's show was live. But then they started uploading like clips of the show, and then there was like three other shows I didn't really care about. Yeah, so you're getting like like, notifications all the time. You disabled that. I hate notifications. Yeah. And then I just kind (laughs) of got tired of listening to Ben Shapiro all the time because that that's how it kind of works. Like liberals seem interesting. That's ridiculous. Yeah, liberals seem interesting when uh, a Republican is president because they're the dissenting voice. And then once they get power. Uh, there's like a window where where they're still okay, and then it then it gets terrible. Um, and it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case this time around, though, because they've they've everybody on the left seems to be hard hard left now. So um, over that, but and then conservatives they're probably going to stay the same way, and it seems like they're going in that direction. It's once a Republican is president, and they've have a sta- uh, once they get the establishment. Um, after you know, after a while, they start just being like big government statists, and Ben Shapiro is turning into that too. So, not interested in that content anymore <laughs> at all. Yeah, yeah. So, either way, so I try and stay away from politics as much as possible now. <laughs> see, I, 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 I love it. <laughs> I'm just never. I've loved it since I was a kid. So, I just, yeah, it just it, that's just never. That's going to be a thing. Like, I don't know. But then again, I'm one of those people who enjoys watching things like The Room. And uh, Neil Breen films, so yeah, I no, I understand. Music, I'm a masochist, so <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. Um, I just I've, I found like a lot of the stuff a lot less interesting. Like, um, but it's also just like the level of viciousness that people are having towards one uh, each other now. Mm-hmm. Differences is like really kind of. It's, I'm not. It's a, I was about to say scary. It's not scary, but it's it's upsetting to me. Like I've had like people who were really really good friends and were very level-headed people uh just had like minor political discussions with them uh online and they've just been like vicious to me and i was just like whoa what has happened here yeah. it's very polarized right now but i, I think this all comes and goes because everybody was really polarized when clinton was in office and then bush was in office and then it kind of let up a little bit at towards the end of his office his office and then Obama came out and it was still a little bit polarized, but not too bad. But now it's really bad, especially when literally Hitler being president. Right. (laughs) Man, I don't know what's going to happen the next time the Democrats win, because like even if Trump were to win in 2020 uh, and got like a full eight years, um, whoever comes after him, like the the Democrats are going to be out for absolute blood like. Yeah. Anyways, um, so back to back to what I was saying. <laughs> like I thought I was a scatterbrain co- uh, host, but anyways, uh, 
So and caps on YouTube. It seems to be like for the most part, there's some exceptions, right? You have Mike Michael Malice and Linked Unithar. Um but for the most part, like most of the ANCAP YouTubers at this point seem to be of the cartoon variety, like Mr. Dapperton and then people who are copying him, like Esoteric Entity, um, uh, Atomic ANCAP, which we're going to talk about in just a second, um, the Voluntarist Consumer. And, and you mean they're literal cartoons. Okay, so that's that's their their content is like a cartoon character. Yeah, and it's not it's not a cartoon. It's not like Freedom Tunes, which Freedom Tunes good good. I like Freedom Tunes. In fact, he's a yeah, co-host on the great. Yeah, he's a co-host on the podcast. Uh, Seamus is, um, this, but that's actual cartoon. That's actually animation. What they're basically doing is just ripping off the Armored Skeptic. Now, n- now, Mister Dapperton, I don't like his channel. Like, I I consider him a f- like an online friend. He's a really good friend. But we have this agreement that I'm not a big fan of his, or he has an understanding rather that I'm not a huge fan of his channel and he's okay with that. Mm -hmm. So I can say this, but he's basically kind of like a clone of armored skeptic. The people who are also ANCAP uh, cartoon YouTubers are copies of him. I don't know if you've seen multiplicity, but if you have a copy of a copy of a copy, uh, the, the, you know, the, the second generation tends to get a little degraded, (laughs) so to speak. Um, not all, I mean, hoodie demons. Okay. <clears throat> um, but a lot of them are just really just cancerous and um, even more so now that they're listening to one particular one who seems to have who seems to have a problem reading like he it seems as though like he reads something he picks out the big words and then fills in the rest with whatever he wants and we kind of see other people repeating this stuff and I wanted to talk about this video that, that I that I saw and I've left comments in the description at, you know, talking, discussing with him why I th- think this this video is trashed here, and it's called um, "Does Fiat Currency Have Value?" Uh, by Atomic Ancap, and I'm not going to pin this on him because he's a really smart kid. Like he, he, when he started his channel, he seems like he knew what he was talking about. He was reading some stuff, maybe not completely in depth stuff, but now it just seems as though he's just regurgitating stuff from some other YouTuber who is trashed here i mean absolute trashed here um yeah. so this video uh i got you to watch it what did you think of it like i asked you what you thought of it already and i didn't put give my input on it i just told you where i think he got this idea from what did you think of it and what's wrong with it or what's right with it um the cartoon ninja that appears in the video i'm not really a super fan of but as like you said we're not going to go after this the the kid for this yeah Um, he seems like he's a smart kid you're right um and you know though it was i wouldn't say everything in it is wrong but it was like the entire time i was watching i was like okay wrong (laughs) wrong (laughs) wrong um this is this idea that fiat currency doesn't have value and that's why we get inflation but um is willing to pay a price for something and they do that if whether that's exchanging you know fiat currency for something or something for fiat currency that means that they do value that good i mean mm-hmm. that's uh they they subjectively have placed importance upon it okay. he's wrong he's not wrong that you know fiat currency is not a great thing right. and we should hope that things like uh you know hard currencies or cryptocurrencies or some other solution comes around for fiat currencies but the uh the economics portion of it was um probably in my opinion um so you you, you cut out what was that economics uh oof oof, oof. oh shit that was oh. me. that was me <laughs> back in <laughs> i was trying to edit the the bit rate of this thing and i actually went into the other room let me just lower the bit rate a little bit so that way we kind of lose sure. a little bit of latency okay and maybe 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 because i think it is me i'm going to try moving the server over closer to me but all things considered um my connection has been absolutely fantastic compared to what it has been over the last couple of times i've tried using discord because I found out what the problem was, but okay, try that again. <laughs> yeah, so I found that the kind of economics portion of his video to be completely lacking, um, and it's just you know, fiat currencies do have value. They are, and the, making a distinction between um, 
I think he said it was like between money and currency, I think is kind of pointless actions when you get into um, like different aspects of the money supply and, and whatnot. So it's like it, I don't think that introducing new terms really matters. Um, I, I, he seems, I mean, if he's an ANCAP, it seems like he's kind of going in the right direction, but I, I think that um, probably sitting down and doing some reading, getting, getting out a copy of man economy and state. And uh, if he's going to, if he's going to use words like marginal utility and whatnot, he should know what they mean. Right. And uh, that was, that was pretty much a lot of the kind of criticism that I had is that it seems as though he was using marginal utility wrong and it almost sounded like a word salad. Well, yes, it, it was. It was very word salad. He said that governments doesn't create uh, value, which I agree, um, because they lack marginal utility. And I was, I, 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 I was just baffled. Like, what does that mean? Like, do governments just not have a problem where each new addition of a good or money diminishes with each new unit of it? I, I don't think that's true. I think they they do see it diminish over. I mean, there are, there are actors inside of the state, right? So I don't I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and unfortunately, like when he's talking about, uh, he brings up a supply supply and demand uh, graph, where he was saying that you know the point where they intersect is it's like well that's not even necessarily the case. That's the equilibrium price. That's the market clearing price. Mm -hmm. But you can still have. <clears throat> higher and lower lower prices you know above or below the uh the equilibrium it's just that that won't be the market clearing price which is why prices shift all the time because we're constantly chasing equilibrium and equilibrium is constantly moving and adjusting through new circumstances uh through you know uh new uh, introductions of more supply less supply people's uh, preferences changing all of these things so it's i i, I just kind of feel like this kid needs to kind of i don't know do a little just do a little bit more homework and and really learn these things yeah um what was it yeah so that was pretty much what i said is that uh su su like money doesn't really get its value from supply and demand sure it affects it um same thing with marginal utility it, yeah it does a, it does affect it um but at the end of the day when it comes to how what like what people find valuable it's completely subjective like i I like if you gave me like if you gave anybody a, like a Blu-ray copy of The Matrix, they would find that very valuable. They would enjoy that. If you gave that to me, mm -hmm. I would have no value for that thing. And we've talked about yeah. re <laughs> reasons why. Um, and a lot of people disagree with me, but that but that's okay because it's my subjective opinion, right? Um, I've seen a video. You're wrong, them. opinion, but it's fine. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> and people would have that same kind of view if if they had a Blu-ray copy of. Uh, Freddie got fingered. They would find that completely worthless. But I would not only find it valuable; I'd find it immensely valuable because it has not been released on Blu-ray, and I'm and I think that's a crime against humanity. Uh, <laughs> but you can see that, like, I would have no like most people. I think if the average or if you look at the the market on the aggregate and say like, what would people find more valuable? More people would find a Chase shirt more valuable than a Milton Friedman shirt, right? Yeah. I mean, that's objectively true. Right. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> it's historically. Really, yeah. So it really comes down to like personal preferences. Now, if we're going to talk about like objective value, which which we're talking about market prices, then, well, then we're talking about like the aggregate of what people buy and sell goods for at any particular moment. You find the average of that price and that's the market price for something. And that's an objective price for it. Right price but it's not that doesn't mean that it's an objective value it's just that's right right literally the price that people paid yeah so but it, they would it's call historical it, data right market value i think that's what they would call it they'd kind of use those terms interchangeably yeah yeah but at that point if you're talking like market value or you know like talking about valuations of assets things like mm -hmm. that that's not the that word value is not being used in the same way as it is in the context right. of like marginal utility and it seems as though he kind of bounces between that two a little bit in that video he kind of yeah conflates the two and i was and I, I was very clear i was like okay so let's take this kind of example you know if, if you if you consider if you're talking about like personal evaluation then um then no you're wrong because just the fact that you would be okay taking a thousand dollars from me and you'd be more than happy to take a thousand dollars from me and you would use it or you would save it and you would not discard it or refuse it show by, by definition you value it end of story 
If you didn't, you would say yeah, a computer I don't want... that I'm sure was purchased with money. Right, right. <laughs> um, I mean, so you, you, everybody finds value in in currency for whatever reason. The state making you take it, state mand- mandatory that you be that you be paid in it, whatever. People still vi- find value in it, even even. And it's and it's still the most marketable good. It is the medium of exchange, you know? Yeah. Even if it's an inferior one and one that has been forced upon people, uh, it still is money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like even still, there's a lot of libertarians who are very much against, uh, federal reserve notes and the central bank and stuff who still, ins- who, in addition to taking things like Bitcoin and gold will say, I'll also take federal reserve notes for donations, which legal tender laws don't don't say that um, you know you have to take if you're going to take donations you have to take it and, and whatever it just says that if you are selling a good or service you have to also take it for Federal Reserve notes you can take it for anything else too but you also have to take it for Federal Reserve notes because it's for it's good for all debts public and private period and private, private correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, um, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you, what kind of term you're using for it, like empirically, you look at market data and say, look, pe- you know, people are exchanging Bitcoin for Federal Reserve notes. There's a market value. People have value in it. End of story. If you're going to say that it's personal thing, just the fact that you would take a thousand dollars from me shows that you would uh, that you have that you find value in it a priori. So no matter how you want to slice it up, it yeah. So I mean, it, but this is kind of like what's going on with YouTube at the moment in terms of ANCAPs is that you get people who are just regurgitating like bad ideas, rehashed ideas. And I remember back in the day, like I used to complain about how libertarians used to talk a lot about how you don't have to pay federal income taxes. Cause look at this 806 loophole or, you know, if you write it in red crayon, you know, you, or look how it's you all in caps, like the correct uh, incantation mm-hmm. with the correct symbols, you know, written in the blood of a hen uh, yeah. around you, then you're, you're magically exempt. Yeah. Uh, the red crayon thing is my favorite tax protester thing. If you write your tax re- uh, letter back in your tax return and you write it in red crayon and say that I'm not liable for federal income tax, you're magically free from it. Uh, or a 9-11 truth. I never or, heard that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one's great. Uh, there's a there's a website called the Red Crayon. I don't know if it's still up. It's It's been shoddy, but it, it was called Red Crayons, and it documents all the attempts by tax protesters and to try to get out and they're all like in jail or facing some sort of legal crime, uh, legal process because of it. It's so funny. But anyways, that I mean, that's what they used to be wrong about all the time. It was just like, look at the, look at the state's kind of code and you can get around it this way. Or, you know, they were wrong about, or conspiracy theories or, um, but usually never about their own ideology. Right. It's they were usually kind of good about like, Oh no, 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 no. You know, this, you know, the non-aggression principle or economics, they used to be pretty good at that. Now it's just like they're wrong about everything. I don't know what's happening. It's all it's kind of fell apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I missed the days where it was like there was you and uh, Junior Bacon Chi and me and Jacob Spinney and X Omniverse. Uh, and we we're all making videos about things and they were all kind of interesting and they went in very interesting directions. But now it's just like fiat money has no... Uh, value Facebook doesn't make any revenue <laughs> they have to take all of the money from the state like just factually inaccurate claims all the time that's that's where we're going um, that sucks yeah but I, I will say this like there's there's a few that don't um Mr. Dapperton sent, tends to be more kind of like the, the clickbaity type stuff like he's more interested in talking about like oh here's this leftist youtuber it says something stupid or um you know, uh, here's you know Antifa being shit cocks, or um, look at these stupid uh, these stupid challenges. You know, like the with the boiling water challenge. Have you heard about this? <laughs> it's sort of like this sort of the thing. Snow. Right? No, Is this no, where they go out in really cold weather. No, it's where they take boiling water and splash it on themselves as a YouTube challenge. Like, you know how like people used to take spoonfuls of of um, uh, cinnamon. Now they're taking you know yeah. mouthfuls of Tide Pods and and splashing boiling water on them and getting having to get skin grafts because their fucking skin melted off. So that's what the kind let, of stuff that he covers. Is, let let Darwin sort this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what basically he talks about is like, look how stupid these people are. Uh, Hoodie Demon seems to be kind of talking more about like, look at these lefties saying stupid shit. 
Uh, and then there's a group of people who think that they understand economics and they don't, and they, they don't. talk about things that's, yeah, that that's unfortunate. they don't understand. And then other people take that and then run with it and make videos of their own and explain things wrong. And then I have to go and hear these things going like, oh, you, you libertarians think that fiat money has no value. It's like, I, no, <laughs> I don't. See, I sit here, I'm sitting here and I'm like, <laughs> 10 years ago, I would have been like, God, someone's got to do something about this. And I would have, that's like, mm -hmm. old me would have been like, go make videos and correct these people and blah, blah, blah. And now I'm just kind of like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But that's, that's the state of um, you, YouTube and caps at the moment. And I wish more people would make more stuff. I'm not asking you to come back. That's, I'm, t I'm done trying. We're done. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'll just get, I'll just drag you on my podcast and we'll talk shit. And that's about it. Uh, so there's a couple other things I wanted to talk about <laughs> besides the state of YouTube and caps, which I spent 30 minutes talking about, which is great. Um, so we could talk about Brett Kavanaugh or Sargon of Applebee's. I'll let you pick. I'm more familiar with Sargon of Applebee's than I am with Brett Kavanaugh. Okay. So what does that mean? <laughs> Do you want to be updated on let's Kavanaugh? Let's hit that first. Let's hit that first and then let's hit Kavanaugh. Okay. So Sargon of Appleby. So you're aware of Sargon of Akkad. I have never been a big fan of Sargon of Akkad. Um, not to say that I disagree with a lot of what he says. I do agree with a lot of what he says and, and does. But my issue had always been like his format. Like he would take like a three minute video from like Lacey Green and then cut up every sentence of that video and respond to it. And then mm -hmm. it would turn into like a three hour long presentation. Maybe, about, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then it really yeah, got right. really meta when people would respond to him in the same fashion. So you would, so you would take up that <laughs> that three oh. hour long video and then cut that up and then intersect it with a commentary. And then they would respond to it. And next thing you know, you get like an eight hour long video where everybody's responding to each other. And you can't tell what was the original cut or what was the, the, the new updated kind of thing that they're talking about. It, it just got too confusing. Um so you're just hearing like people talk and then like intersecting like a rebuttal to that and then a rebuttal to that. And you don't know if what's a rebuttal to what and what's the new update and what's right. the one from the previous video because you haven't been following the whole thing because you don't have 24 hours to listen to an entire thread. And they don't they don't know how to summarize. They just have to show the clip. And that was kind of like um, where I was like, yeah, I, I, I can't I can't deal with this. I can't I can't deal with this. Some of the um, this week in stupids were fine because it was just like, let's just show a clip of someone saying something's dumb, summarize or summarize what they said, rebut it real quick, move on to the next story. That was kind of okay. Or when he was owning the SJWs, which earlier on, that was fun, but now it's just kind of taking its course because- so old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like the YouTube atheist thing. Oh, we should talk about that because I've been, I've been getting flooded with anti-theists. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Um, but anyways, Man, I've, I, I've seen any uh, YouTube atheists. It, <laughs> it, it hasn't. Days. Yeah, it hasn't gotten any better. It has not gotten any better. <laughs> not at all. It's gotten worse. But anyways, um, so yeah, like, like you don't only rebut the same thing over and over and over and over again. Like how many times do we need to hear, um, you know, the the uh, the the pay gap. Uh, God damn it. The wage gap myth like debunked. Like how many times do we have to hear that debunked? Like it's it's been debunked over and over and over and over again. I don't want to hear it again. Um, but we felt the compelled the need to to say that over again. Just like the whole uh, atheist community used to fucking talk about how all babies are atheists over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like that thing, right? <clears throat> but there was one where he did uh like an interview or uh, a debate between some other guy, and I forget his name, at MythCon, and it was really good. Like he he did a really good job. But uh, anytime he ever does a debate with anybody else, he just falls fails spectacularly. Like he did a debate with um, uh, Richard Spencer, who I have many criticisms with. I, I share a lot of <clears throat> his uh, Sargon's disagreement with Richard Spencer, but his his debate performance was pathetic like absolutely pathetic um so he Not that impressive to me like he doesn't seem like he'd be that difficult to debate who richard spencer or sargon either but richard spencer is what i'm saying so it's like it's surprising to me that he did so poorly it's actually not surprising to me that he did so poorly and the reason being that uh sargon is in my opinion he's right on a lot of things like free speech and like he's he's been pretty good at 
popularizing certain uh, ideas, but his ideas are not very sophisticated. Right. You can't, if you try and go deeper with him on things, there's not, much there for him to, to go back to in terms of like first principles or just knowing about really having like kind of a coherent political philosophy yeah. now S- richard spencer who i don't think is very intellectually formidable at all um have some sophistication to his views and he kn- and like actually knows a lot of he knows enough stuff that if you press him on a question he, even if his reason is completely like stupid or evil he's going to have a reason for something mm-hmm. that he said right you know, uh, him in in debates and whatnot where it he kind of fumbles around for something that's <laughs> yeah. like talking like anytime talking about like democracy you know it's like he, he he does these like appeals to democracy as if it is like some sort of uh given and it's like no that's what we are asking about um, so I can I can see him failing in, in a debate with with Spencer, unfortunately. Um. <laughs> yeah, R- Richard Spencer, for all of his faults, at least his ideology is um, well conceived. Like he he has a reason for the things that he believes, right or wrong. He has a reason for a lot oh, of the things that he believes. Dumb reasons, like right, they're right. really stupid reasons. But there is something there. It's like you know we can go one step past just like an appeal to some monolithic idea of democracy or or, or something like that. Right, right, right. And right. he will have like, okay, this is a justification for what I'm saying. Right. Even though it's retarded. Yeah. Um, oh, it's <laughs> excuse me, Down syndrome. <laughs> I think Any I think more. the term that we use now is intellectually united. By the way, and you won't get that joke, but intellectually united. Yeah, intellectually <laughs> united. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> uh, that aside, um, but anyway, so he has been literally dealing with pan-Europeanism lately, and unlike Jim, Mister Messer, <laughs> has <laughs> doesn't even own a suit. Um, so he, he's been palling around with UKIP and trying to, uh, get this art, was it article 13 or article 12, whatever that's been going around in the, uh, the UK where they're going to like tax memes and make sure that memes are, uh, not violating like copyright any... compliant or something. Yeah. <laughs> so every, everything you upload on the internet needs to be checked out. And to be fair, that it's a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Uh, and it needs to be opposed. But he's been palling around with UKIP, who, who is a major political force in, in the UK, sarcasm. Um, and he's, he's been dealing with that, and um, he's been hanging out with Count Dankula. Now, Count Dankula, I don't know if you've seen, but he has a fucking awesome suit, and he looks good in his suit. It's got even got a little vest under it, like the, the three-piece and all. Like he, he, He's looking sharp. Um, but Sargon got himself a fancy new suit from uh, France. And ever since he got that suit, like, it's been fucking smug city. <laughs> like, smug uh. <laughs> city. He, now he's literally dealing with pan-European politics and Mr. Medecker. Uh, are you, you're, I hope you're familiar with Mr. Medecker. Uh, yeah, vaguely. What are you doing with your life? Get get on this. Get on this now. I, I get I get updates on Mr. Medecker every once in a while from oh, uh, a mutual friend of ours. Binge. He's obsessed with it. Binge his channel, find his his streams because he he deletes them as soon as he's done and they get uploaded elsewhere. Watch his streams; they're fucking great. Uh, anyways, but he's been he he's been like talking shit on on Sargon because Sargon's been getting s- smug, and uh, and and uh, when when he's been, when he does 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 that, and it's mostly just kind of like yeah, he's just a smug asshole, whatever. Um, Sargon thought it would be a good idea to to go after him. At, you know, in his new suit and all, mm-hmm. um, and said that Jim doesn't doesn't even own a suit. Like, ha ha ha! He doesn't know what he's doing. All he does is talk shit on the internet. So, anyways, Sargon did a a, uh, a stream where it's twenty minutes of the of the stream had no audio, and of course he doesn't didn't know <laughs> that it didn't have audio because oh, he disabled he disabled chat because he knew that if that if he enabled chat, uh, there would be an issue, and he also did it like. Hours before it was scheduled, because Jim said, "Mr. Medicker, Jim, which I'll call Jim from here on out because it's easier." Uh, J- Jim uh, said that, "Look, if um, if he does a live stream, we're going to snipe his stream, meaning that we're going to like do a stream at the exact same time and get more 
viewers than right. him and make fun of him. Um, so Sargon thought it'd be clever to do it early in the morning while Jim was still asleep. <laughs> And so, like, 20 minutes of the broadcast, no audio. And it took one of his friends to actually call him up on Skype and say, hey, dude, you're streaming right now, but there's no audio. And we can't tell you because you disabled chat. (laughs) So he had to do the whole stream. He had to do the stream all over again. And in it, he accused him of grooming uh, young kids on the internet. He was sort of implying that, you know, it was for sexual reasons. But, um, he, you know, he made it so, like, he could back away from it. You know, he was like, he showed some sexually charged stuff that Jim was doing. Um, and said, so like, look, he's grooming. That's the definition of grooming. Uh, but he never actually said that it was grooming for sex. The rest of the time he was using it for, uh, like, he was just grooming kids to be online shitlord trolls. Um, so there was that implication. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that he like was. a weird place. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that he was part of this organization and uh, with. Uh, what the fuck was his name? So Medicare used to be a group of people and they used to be troll and they used to troll people, uh, especially around Encyclopedia Dramatica related stuff. Mm-hmm. And by the way, in case you didn't know this, this but Jim, Mr. Medicare used to actually create content with H uh, um, bomber guy. <laughs> wow. Uh, and then this other juggalo guy and this other juggalo guy kind of got trolls remorse and made this, thing on the Medicare site where it says like we're not doing this anymore uh we're mm-hmm. good people now we've grown up um h bomber guy is kind of the same opinion that you know like what he did was probably not the best of things and but yeah jim is still jim is still awesome and jim um and so yeah he was making all these claims and and he was saying that that jim was being like it's just a smug ego egotistic jerk and then literally in the next sentence, he was bragging about him hanging out with Nigel Farage and he's one, uh, what is it, one degree of separation from Donald Trump. And isn't he great that he's actually saving Europe right now from Article 13. And Jim is just, tr- all he does is just groom internet uh, internet trolls. That's all he does. Problem oh my was, God. problem was, there is an overlap of Mr. Medicare viewers and Sargon viewers. So when he's insulting right. Mr. Medicare's audience, he's also insulting his own audience. Yeah, he's insulting his own <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. And so Jim did a response to him. And, and, and by the way, those streams are fucking fantastic. Um, but Sargon also said that he was going to do an interview with the BBC and, the, and a bunch of other media sites have been co- uh, covering this as well. Um, but they also dug out a lot of people who were upset when they were insulting where they were being insulted by their, you know, by Sargon, their own audience, started digging up stuff, uh, especially on the kill stream, which is also great. You should check that out. Um, the Ralph report kill stream. They were digging out some of the things that he was saying where he was, uh, where Sargon was accusing the alt right of being like, uh, like niggers. They're be- they're acting like niggers. They're literally white niggers. <laughs> So the media is reporting on that. Uh, Sargon is saying this? Yes, yeah, Sargon. Like, he was doing a live stream and then like the alt-right started coming into his channel and he was like, you guys are acting like niggas right now. You are basically white niggas. The way you say what uh, uh, niggas I act, know. you're acting like that right now. That went over well <laughs> with the media. Yeah, they, yeah, I'm sure. All right. Uh, some of the other things he said, he was in a, 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 a discussion with Just a Car, which I'm sure you're familiar with Just a Car. Oh. integral math <laughs> okay um but in it they were talking about how um because just a car had been sexually active when he was 11 years old um that he's okay with with other people being that way too and sarkon said like you, you just can't say that it has to be 18 it really depends on the child <laughs> so of course the media picked up on that that's that's been a meme too <laughs> like oh, all these they've God, been it's just memes that like soundbite Yep. Gold. Look, if you're going to be a politician, right, you can't have a library of stuff where you're just speaking into the microphone for hours and hours and hours because there are things in there, both context and out of context, that can be taken and used against you. It's why I'm never no. going to be a serious political contender because there's plenty of radio shows and podcasts and YouTube videos that I've made where I've said things that were pretty fucking edgy 
or that I've that I've said things that were edgy to make a point about something that I think is wrong about being edgy. Hundred point to what you're saying though, Rob Ford. Rob Ford isn't that's that's mayor though. Everybody expects their mayor no. to be fucking high on crack and fucking banging hookers. <laughs> that's just how mayors are. But the are. things that he said and just was fine with saying it mm-hmm. that ever came out was <laughs> when he was talking about um someone had accused him of uh, like coming on to them and saying that like he wanted to eat their pussy or something. He's like, this is ridiculous. I have never said that I would, uh, that I want to eat, uh, eat her pussy. I'm happily married. I've got plenty to eat at home. Yeah. <laughs> and then just walks off. And like the reporter is like, they all stop and like, look at each other. Like, what the fuck did he just say? Yeah. But that's a little different. Cause he's what well, he was just the mayor of Toronto. It's the fucking mayor. Like, no one really gives a shit about the That's mayor true, unless you're in New York or L.A. I don't even think they care in Chicago. No, in Chicago, they choose it based on, like, how connected you are to the mob. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, but, yeah, like, if you're going if you're gonna to deal with, like, any kind of, like, major politics, especially on the national level or international level, in, in the case of the, U, uh, the European Union, which he was kind of playing in, you, you you can't have a, a, a an arsenal of of great content for media to to take and snip out and either take in context or out of context against you. So yeah, this is actually something that I uh, kind of predicted back when like MySpace and Facebook uh, first started becoming really popular, um, and when I was becoming a libertarian, I was just like, this is amazing because people that are like my age or even just a slightly bit older, all these people that got into social media, like this is so many po- like political careers just strangled in yep. the crib. Yep. These things where it's like, it's a, it's one of these positive unseen consequences of these, of, of this just invention happening of the internet, you know? So it's like, there's so many people that will just never get to be in power. Terrible, terrible people uh, because they have all this insane shit that they've said and there's records of it. Yep. Yep. And if, and if you're not just putting that stuff out, thinking that it'll never be seen. And on top of that, also putting out content on things like YouTube, which is supposed to be as seen as by many people as possible. Like that's what you're supposed to be doing on YouTube. Whereas Facebook, you, you you could just go like, oh, I'm just sharing shit with my friends and my mom and dad, and I don't care if yeah. it's public or not. Whereas YouTube, it's like I'm trying to get views. Yeah, you're go- you're going to, especially especially in long form content where you're cr- like doing the live streams and you're, uh, doing- you're gonna say something you're gonna that yeah. you're gonna you know regret yeah at some point yeah if you if if you speak words into a microphone if you say enough of them you're going to eventually say something that's going to offend someone later on down the line large group of people and if you ever try to take office the media is going to stick through all that stuff and find all Hmm. of it because there's also going to be other people who are listening to you too who don't like you and we're going to try to find things that you say and then report them publicly and that that helps media go like okay let's look at his critics and see some of the things that they take (laughs) find the things that you know because they're going to help me find all the nasty bits so yeah so if you're if you're a podcaster, your uh, your political career is already over. Sorry, it just is. Or radio. A funny story. One of the reasons that I could never be in government, and it's not a uh, like something I said or did, um, is that I I figured out that politics was just a cesspool of evil, and I uh, could never result, no matter how good the people were in. And I was in, when I was in college in government, uh, for a full year, I was like the communications director or some bullshit thing. Um, and was like, I actually kind of want to make this work a little bit better. And just at the level of a student government, the insane bureaucracy go through to do anything. And the insane like town hall meetings basically were like just crazy people would would show up uh students and just monologue and rant about things and and treats the student government as if it was like some real thing it was insane to me and so i got very very apathetic and i just stopped doing any work (laughs) but then 
collecting like a real paycheck at that point too. It was like, I mean, it was like 150 bucks a month or something like that, but that was, you know, beer money and groceries. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't doing anything, but I was getting paid for it. And I tried to quit, but uh, my friends who were like a couple levels higher, like one of my friends, she was the, the class president or whatever, was like, no, like you committed to this, you should stay in it, blah, blah, blah. They talked me into staying. And I didn't want to do that. Like, I'm just going to collect a paycheck. Um, at the end of the year, I discovered that our club budget still had like several hundred dollars in it. It was our, our theater club. We had a very small theater program uh, that we were a part of, and we were always uh, too busy with the plays and things that we the productions that we were doing in in the program that we never had any time to actually use any of the club funds that we had. So we discovered that we still have these club funds. They like, we're not telling anyone about this, right? Right? Okay, good. So we bought tickets to see a Broadway tour in Seattle. We then drove up, had parking, gas paid for everything, and took ourselves out to a steakhouse and <laughs> got spent like 200 bucks on dinner and wine and, <laughs> and went and saw uh, a show. Jeez. Yeah. So we basically embezzled club funds. Uh, <laughs> and these are things that we could have used the money for, you know, had we and split it a little more evenly but we we took it so the next year we're thinking okay that worked out really well we're still going to be in the same position we're not going to be able to uh (laughs) use any of this money but we're still going to propose a budget for our club and so we proposed the most insanely padded budget that we possibly could knowing that they were going to gut it as much as possible we're like even if we get like 50% of what we're asking for. This is way more money than last time. (laughs) And it happened. And we went to another, I I don't remember if we went to another show that year, if we actually got around to doing it, but it was like, we, we were planning on just like completely cheating the system. Um, There was another time where we had a, uh, this was like some event. Oh, it was for um, St. Patrick's day. They had this thing where it was like, there was a cash prize if you found enough of these like plastic shamrocks that people like put all over our campus and shit um like this stupid little like treasure hunt and they would always keep secret when they were going to do it but since we knew everyone on student government it would always slip to us the date that it would happen and so we'd stay up until like two or three in the morning and we'd go and we'd rob the 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 campus grounds blind for the most part we'd leave enough so it uh it looked like there was enough that people could, could gather these things, but you know, we grabbed up like more, we made sure we got more than 50% of them. So no matter what we would win cash. Um, Cause I was poor as shit. Uh, <laughs> I consider myself and are like that at all. I consider myself to be a fairly decent human being and, you know, fairly decent human being and you put them in a situation where the incentives are so perverse and flipped like that even at the level of like a student government bureaucracy you're going to get horrible horrible results um so that was kind of eye-opening to me being like jesus i wonder what like actual government is like where there's like prostitutes and drugs and like millions of dollars on the line (laughs) like not not only that but just like there's even like billions of dollars on some of these lines too. Especially if you're talking about the federal government, you're talking about trillions, yeah. trillions of dollars <laughs> on the line. It's like unimaginable amounts of money. Yeah. So yeah, like uh, getting in. Uh, I, I agree that like, getting in politics is, is absolutely insane. Getting in politics when you have an, a, a giant archive of stupid shit ready to just completely like shame you is a bad idea. Because here's what ended up happening with Sargon. After these things came out, the BBC didn't even report him on him yet. As far as I know, I, they haven't released their their footage. But he did an interview, which was a stupid idea. Be- not only that, but he used to like make fun of Richard Spencer for going in on the mainstream media and saying shit because they knew <laughs> because he told him like you're, they're going to take you out of context, you fucking idiot. And then he goes on there thinking that oh no, the BBC Richard Spencer in context, and it would still be crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you're gonna then you're gonna go to the BBC. Of course, they're gonna take you out of context, Sargon. Of course, all these news things are gonna take you out of context. I don't think some of those things that he was saying were out of context. If you can go and look at them, they were pretty pretty damning. But 
still, uh, they're not going to make you look good, especially if you're palling around with a political party like you, Kib, which the media are not exactly big fans of. Of course, they're going to make I, you look bad. Like, what are you fucking thinking? And so he ended up writing a, a response and saying, like, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting out this statement and I expect you to to publish it in full. And of course, guess what? Can you imagine what happens after that? You know, they've, they've put, yeah, oh, they, they put they, you know, they, they put that entire report in whole for everybody. To, of course not. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course, they didn't even mention it. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you thinking? They're not going to. So anyways. The BBC didn't come out yet. Thing didn't come out yet. A couple of news articles came out, basically saying that you know, you know, he he's he's okay with uh, banging little kids so long as it depends on the child. Um, and oh you know, he God. he goes and says he calls he calls white people niggers. Um, he <laughs> then. And, oh my God! And then he goes like, "Yeah, I'm just going to retire from from you know from doing literally pan European politics now. Uh, I'm just going to go back to making uh, video game reviews and." live streams and that sort of thing. That's what I'm going to go back to. I'm just going to talk about things that I like now. So rip in peace, Sargon porn one out for you. <laughs> <From my boys. laughs> yeah, it's over. Sargon is over. By the way, I should mention that I was talking about Dankula suit. I never actually finished that whole thing. Sargon's suit was completely ill-fitting. Like he had two suits. Like one was like a <laughs> short sleeve shirt and a tie, which you saw uh, juxtaposed on the background of Applebee's, um, because people were saying like he looks like an Applebee's manager about ready to take your order for kicking wings. <laughs> 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 and then the other suit he had, he, it was like really ill-fitting. He looked like Donald Trump, like Donald Trump's suit type, terrible. Um, which Donald Trump can get away with it because he's been doing that for years. Um, that's what everybody expects of him. But Sargon was trying to be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look fresh. Let me get a, a suit that doesn't fit me right. Um, Take tips from Review Bra. Yeah, Review Bra. Of course, but he, 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 he does like the old kind of like tycoon style of clothing, early 20th century style he's of like clothing. He's like late 80s to mid 90s uh, suits with like giant lapels. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah i started watching him ironically and now i just like him yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I like his videos and his reviews <laughs> <laughs> this, this was a complete disappointment it ruined my day <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thanks, my, oh KFC. god yeah i wasn't it was like my uh my my disappointment and, and my disappointment knows no bounds or something i can't remember <laughs> the exact quote it was so good <laughs> And what was it over? It was something like KFC or some sort of KFC Burger product. King. Burger yeah. King, whatever. <laughs> he, yeah, he's great. I, I think the one that really, I think the, the video that set him off was the whole, let's compare the different flavors of Walmart water. Blend Spring versus some other generic brand of water. Yeah, it was great value. <laughs> that's, that's Walmart brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, spring water and drinking water. And honestly, I was like taking him seriously because I remember seeing both of them. And I'm like, "What's the fucking difference?" <laughs> like, I, I know what. Well, that's the water thing. It's like, I I remember going to a fast food place one time and being like, "Oh my god!" Like that Captain Crunch milkshake. He gave that a pretty good review. I should try that. And like, I bought it. And I was like, Holy shit! I'm sold on review, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. I really can't stand how the term foodie now means like the guy who tries everything tries the new fucking <laughs> who's like the first yeah. to try the new arby's <laughs> fajita like i uh, that's not being what a foodie is that's not what a foodie is it's a <laughs> meaningless term now but yeah it is <laughs> but it's joey's world tour it's like a nightmare like yes one is actually hard for me to to describe. You, like I saw someone. This was the grossest thing I've ever seen. It was the, uh, one of these things where he's eating like I don't know. It was like chocolate pudding or something. Nutella. And they put, it was Nutella. I know. What you're, and he's Nutella. wearing. Yeah, <laughs> and he was wearing the the Mickey Mouse hat, right? So I had seen. Yes, that's the exact one. I had seen that, but someone <laughs> took the video and put it in reverse, <laughs> and it's like the most. 
horrifying thing. I'm sure it's on YouTube. It is so gross. Watch the original. It's it's even worse when you watch it. And uh, you can on YouTube. You can set the speed, right? Set it yeah. for times two. It's the. F- <laughs> <laughs> it's also bad. There was also there's also another YouTube channel, and I wish I could remember the name. But what he does is he, he takes like clips of Joey's World Tour, and he slows them down, and he puts like these weird filters over them, and yeah, he plays deep like fries this, them. What was it? <laughs> he deep fries them. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Uh, and then he also plays like this weird, creepy music that he writes, but it's like dun, 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 like it's really creepy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember the one that he did where he was eating the the Nashville chicken and he was just scarfing it just like just putting as much food in his mouth as he can as he can just, oh, oh, oh. Mm, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> God, and he makes and he makes the weirdest like noises yeah it, like oh god yeah that that is just like the grossest <laughs> thing I have ever seen in my life is that man Next time you watch a Joey's World Not Tour, true. I've seen a lot of other groups, but that that was it, that's up there in things that repulse me. Next time you watch a Joey's World Tour, look at the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I haven't. Di- yeah, I've never dived in. <laughs> I'll, I'll spoil it for you. They're all like, "Hey, Joey, why don't you uh, come put that churro in my uh, uh, in my buns?" Wee 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 wee. It's always like gay shit. Like <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you put your little muchacho in? Because <laughs> he's always saying muchacho. Hey, muchachos! <laughs> he's like, hey, why don't you put your little muchacho in my um, <laughs> in my <laughs> in my buns or whatever? Wee, 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 wee. This, is, this is why, like, I just prefer review bras because everyone's just like, man, he's a fucking legend, you know? Like, everyone, yeah, yeah. it's like it's everything about review bra is just like so positive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's legitimately positive. Everyone really genuinely likes the guy. Maybe know, ironically like he, to an like extent, he, but you know, a lot of ironic support for him. But it's still, it's like people find him kind of endearing, and like uh, it's just, yeah. There's not, it's not like. But he's aware of this. I think he's aware. Yeah. I think he's aware of of his audience, and why people like. Oh, him. Oh, completely. And he always posts like memes about him and stuff. Like people will make memes about like, it. And he's, he's, he's cool with that, and like anytime, like people. Like come after him he's like well you know my channel's not for everyone but you gotta do what you like you gotta do what you and you, you guys your supporters are so great <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the whole, there's uh, a, someone did this bizarre like oil painting of him um and it's it's currently my wallpaper on my my computer at work <laughs> I, I i was dying when i saw the um the Kanye West Roblox video. What was it? <laughs> With the little pump. Such a fucking hoe. Yeah. Uh, where they put his face on <laughs> Kanye West. Kanye, he put his head on Kanye West's um, Roblox body. Yeah. That's fucking beautiful. I, I was dying. I, I sent that to you, too. I was like, fucking, I know you love this shit. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. You, YouTube is full of just terrible stuff, and you have to learn how to love it, ironically. I don't know. Anyways, so we talk about Kavanaugh because I don't I don't think you know much about what's going on with Kavanaugh. I don't think a lot of people no. who listen aren't following this because a lot of my audience are just jaded about not just politics but libertarians in general. <laughs> but uh, so Brett Kavanaugh, he's the new Supreme Court pick of Donald Trump after Kennedy is talk uh, not just talking about he is resigning, or I think he may actually have resigned. He's going to be the replacement. He was on the short list. And when they put him on the short list, there was a woman who came forward and said um, that he that sh- that he sexually assaulted her uh, back when mm-hmm. she was 15 and he was 17. And there was also stuff where she was saying that in 2012 when he was just a federal judge as well. So it's not like this is something that, you know, that that just came out just when he got nominated. This was this was already pre- pretty, pretty established that. You know, she's, she was making this claim against him, mm-hmm. but either way, um, so like he was announced now, nor like the, he's, he's pretty good about most of the stuff when it comes to like, in terms of Supreme courts, he's, he's okay. Uh, he's not the best. His, his stance on the fourth amendment and the NSA are absolute dog shit. I think we all could agree on that. Uh, terrible. Um, Rand Paul has been pretty good about calling him out on that stuff, but 
all things considered, he's definitely a better pick than anyone Hillary Clinton would choose. I think we can agree with that. Um, I, I, I usually trust your kind of okay. opinion on these, these sorts of things. Uh, we, we tend to have pretty similar opinions, but uh, I don't know anything about him other than these, you know, the accusations that have come out uh, in the just insane circus that that's turned into. And, yeah, and it's specifically specific. what I had seen like before that was his statement about the NSA uh, metadata collection program being compatible with the fourth amendment. And from that moment, I was just like, like just kill this guy yeah. uh, in Minecraft. Um, <laughs> in it's, Minecraft uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> this is the NSA. People truly do not understand that they are of the organizations in the world that we know about. They are probably the single most dangerous organization on the planet. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's not just because of like the Orwellian surveillance, it's the the damage that they have done and are continually trying to do to computer security is going to get people killed and probably has gotten people killed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guarantee, uh, already, it, but I guarantee a lot of people have died from this, I'm sure. It's it's nuts, but it's the type of thing like people they don't tend to think about this kind of stuff, but it's like when the NSA is trying to break and I'm sure they have uh uh break security on mobile devices the tools that they create some of these uh these act tools that they have have made it out into the wild and are just there for anybody to use yeah now imagine a situation where like in new york city you have uh all of these phones are compromised and people get uh like this self-propagating malware that's basically that's just spreading from phone to phone they don't even know that know they have it but then just start all calling 911 at the same time mm-hmm. for hours and hours and hours and hours. Yep. How many people would die because of that? Right. And that's just like the most completely uncreative thing that you could think of to do with this. So it's like anybody who is supporting the NSA in like any regard, I'm just, I'm so totally opposed to them on kind of an existential level that it's like the the rest of, you know, even if the accusations are true, if they're not, it's Less important to me than the things <laughs> that yeah. they will have actual power to do. Yeah, and, it's, um, and it's, also it's just like I don't think anybody should be on the Supreme Court. I think the Supreme Court should be abolished. It's right. this like horrible centralized power that ju- is going to screw massive amounts of people over and has for since the beginning of uh, of the constitutional uh, government as we know it. Yeah, I mean, so it, it was a good kind of it was a good. I don't want to say it's a good idea, but it's sort of, I guess, it's tried to make it some sort of check and balance. It was a good attempt, but it didn't work Sometime. out that well. Sometimes it yes. does. But, the, the, but the, in a lot of cases, it doesn't. You yeah. know, like when they declared Dred Scott, uh, you know, couldn't have his freedom, uh, mm-hmm. partially on the grounds that he was not a person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a Supreme, that was a Supreme Court choice. Like, it's like they, they just have too much power. Um, they're all terrible. I don't. I don't want anything to do with Kavanaugh or anyone. Yeah. And cap intensifies basically <laughs> is my is my opinion on all of it. Yeah. Um, but here here's but then, here's where it gets it. here's where it gets really fucking crazy. So th- they're delaying his nomination because of these allegations. Now there's been one because of this one allegation from Miss Ford, Doctor Ford rather. Um, there's been a couple more that have came out. One of them was a woman who claimed to be ganged, gang raped by a group of men, including Mr. Kavanaugh. Um, the New York Times was going to report on it, and then they couldn't find any cooperating evidence to support it whatsoever. However, the uh, the Democrats still feel a need to bring it up constantly during these these hearings that have been going on. Uh, where even the uh, even the New York Times, as much uh, as much fake news as they've been propagating recently. Even they were like, "This is bullshit. Uh, we're not going to report this." Um, I forget what the other one was, but again, it was it was just as flimsy. Um, I can't remember who what what was that, but specifically off the top of my head, I, I was listening to it earlier, and I can't believe I don't remember now. But Miss Ford uh, is claiming that uh, during a party in 1982, uh, a couple of months before I was born. Um, <laughs> so this is like 36 years ago. So you've been implicated in this. So I, okay. I've been definitely been implicated in this clearly, uh, that when she was 15, she had, she was at a pool and she was swimming. And then the, she heard there was a party going on nearby. She went to this party and Brett Kavanaugh and his friend, uh, were at this party and a few other, few of his friends, but 
him and another friend uh, t- pushed her into a room, locked the door behind them, got on top of her, started grinding on her uh, on top yeah. of the mm-hmm. bed and holding her their hand over her mouth so she couldn't scream. And the yes. other one was jumping in and off of the bed while Kavanaugh was on top of her, grinding her. And then during one of the points where the other guy jumped onto the bed, uh, he kind of lost his balance and she was able to escape and, and leave the, leave the apartment and it's mostly scarred her and she has proof that she um, that she has had scars from this mental scars from this where even in 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 her marriage counseling or whatever she insisted that she had two front doors on her house now mm-hmm. I I I think that there definitely is something to the fact that she was sexually assaulted. However, the 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 people that she that she named as witnesses to this have all come forward and signed affidavits under a penalty of perjury uh saying that no, they don't ever recall ever being at a party with Brett Kavanaugh ever. Right, but I mean, here's the thing like why would anyone remember a party from 30 years ago where nothing happened to them personally. Right. And their, well, their friends were also saying that they guess it was a small party. It wasn't supposed to be like a big thing, um, but a smaller party. I think that's what it was saying. And they don't remember any, anything about this stuff huh. or that she ran off or anything at, at the, at a party. Um, and definitely Brett Kavanaugh was not there. Um, so I, I, okay. I have a feeling that I hate waiting through all of any of this yeah, stuff. <laughs> it seems, it seems as though th- what it looks like is that she was sexually assaulted at a party, just not one at a party with Brett Kavanaugh and get, definitely Ka- Kavanaugh was not the one doing it. And after all these years, it's a good chance that she probably misremembered things or just got things wrong. And especially during a traumatic event, mm-hmm. you're probably not going to be very, cognizant of everything that's happening you're just going to be trying to get mm-hmm. the hell out of there so there's a good chance that she's just making a misidentification um i mean this is actually something uh that it's like eyewitness testimony is so yeah unreliable in the absence of physical evidence um and so i don't know i, I mean all i know about this is what is what you've told me but um yeah, the the it's it it's odd to me that we're that people are trying to make no oh, I think like almost like evidence ev- almost evidentiary claims based on our remembering from thirty years ago mm-hmm. um not evidence um here's the other thing though uh you know my <laughs> my opinion of politicians in general it wouldn't (laughs) surprise me is a rapist i wouldn't be the in the slightest bit surprised you like these people are utterly depraved (laughs) and just the idea that you would be going into the highest levels of government you have to be a really in you know in the words of the great frank reynolds you have to be a real low down piece of shit so it's entirely possible that this guy maybe did do this stuff but i mean there's not you're not going to be able to prove this in some sort of a court of law or even necessary now especially not even a court of public opinion mm-hmm. um simply because republicans are going to support what under any circumstances and democrats are going to oppose the nominee no matter what right on under any circumstances just because of the level of polarization and all of these these reasons for the most part are like ex post just like ex post justifications you know like they they're all after (laughs) they're secondary to the fact that people will either support trump's nominee or they won't and that's it you know it's a it's a binary thing people aren't thinking about this um none of this has had to do with any of his positions yeah uh whatsoever so it's like it's a it's all about his character which is fair Uh, but to me yeah it's just these you it could be it could be either either way this could be a you know a case of people misremembering things from uh you know misremembering real events from a long long time ago or it could be that he's a psychopathic rapist yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> either way boil him in oil in minecraft <laughs> or lava is there, is there oil? Orbit. I don't think that's there the is. only way to be sure yeah lava just make sure it's lava that one's that one's more sure I don't think there's oil 
and Minecraft. I haven't played it. In a yeah, yeah. Maybe there been an update. Boil him and lava in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, I, I think the better idea would be to choose another one from a short list because there are a couple of the justices that are actually fairly good, even even on the NSA. Um, <laughs> that, that I think would be a much better choice. But I think the more important thing to talk about here, because sure, but this everybody looks bad in this. The Democrats look bad everybody. for drudging oh, out yeah. these obviously bullshit uh, cases like four to side. There's the other two were obviously bullshit. Um, the the news media is even kind of calling them out and saying like these are bullshit. So they look bad. Republicans mm-hmm. look bad too because they're going around saying like, oh, this lady is lying. She's never been sexually assaulted when there's clear evidence that she, <laughs> oh, she has experienced something. <laughs> right. I know. It's like these they're, they're taking these people who have been through this like horrific trauma and being like fuck you you're doing this for political purposes <laughs> which is also it's like why the fuck would anyone like just go in and make some sort of an accusation like this if the, if they didn't you know actually believe that uh it was true yeah you know like the, you don't go in and sacrifice your life your reputation and have them in and just in, and your invite life the she, media. she's been getting death threats yeah, exactly. It's like you don't bring that into your life for no reason. Yeah, and she's- like it's and, and it's and when people are like uh, to me that 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 they're they're saying that these people are just fabricating these things. Yeah, and she's she's a doctor. Uh, my wife's a doctor. Uh, like she's a doctor, and she you know she makes pretty good money. And she, her GoFundMe, I think, has been like one hundred and seventy five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's that's I mean that's that's some good money, but all things considered, she probably makes that in two years. Exactly, like oh, two years of salary for ruining your entire life. Yeah, like, that, <laughs> who takes that, that deal? <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, like Brett Kavanaugh, like his his entire career is probably going to be ruined if he doesn't get this nomination uh, over all these bizarre <laughs> accusations. Which actually, I which that, I'm fine with. Not, <laughs> I'm yeah, fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with I really it. hope he doesn't get it because yeah. my favorite thing ever is watching politicians get ground into, into hamburger yeah. and when they throw each other under the bus like that's the best part of elections is when someone makes a mistake or they have to get rid of someone you know to uh to you know to as basically a sacrifice to to the media and to everyone else i love that because everyone they're all competing for these just positions of 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 evil and power and when they fail at it and they get ground up into dust that just makes me feel so good yeah so that's probably a good i mean a lot of people are upset like oh we're gonna destroy his career over these bullshit allegations it's like yeah sure it's bullshit allegations the, the judge's but career oh, like, but he I is don't... a federal judge who who's for the nsa and i want to reiterate like all of these like Republican politicians who are going around saying like, yeah, Apple should put definitely put a loop, uh, uh, a hole in their security just for the for the government to uh, have access to this information in case like a terrorist gets their phone recovered. Like we should be able to get in there and see what's going on. Like, OK, well, maybe, let's, let's just let's just assume that that's a good thing for them to do. Um, eventually, there are going to be hacker groups that are going to find out how to get into this hole. It's not no. may may it's not find. possible. It's not it's not just, just just possible. It is going to happen. It will happen. That's the thing is like the people believe that you could make a back door just for the government. It's you like can't. it doesn't no. that's not possible. If you make a door, anyone can walk through it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the they're more constantly compl- at, they're constantly asking computer security professionals to do magic. And yeah. it's just like go just and yourself, please. <laughs> you peacefully sunset yourself. <laughs> sunset yourself. <laughs> peacefully sunset yourself. Um, yeah, like any 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 hole can be exploited. They will find it. They have people who are dedicated to find any. There was uh, oh god, what was this? So so like if you go to a hotel and they have those little key cards, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like the little magnetic strip oh, cards. Yeah. Yeah. So they have various different forms of these things, but there was a there was a bunch of them who had like this little security hole. And they literally like you put like this little 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 device in this little hole at the bottom, and if you send a signal to it, it'll unlock the door. Any door in a in a hotel <laughs> whatsoever. 
And they made the security hole so that like the hotel operators or the, the company that makes them are able to fix any kind of damages. But it didn't take very long for some security guy to, to find out like, oh, there's, there's, there's a computerized system. There has to be a hole. And, and yeah. he found a hole. There's people who, are, who dedicate their lives finding holes in systems. And they do it for various reasons. One, they just, they're, they're a black hat. A hacker who just wants to fuck with people and fuck with these like corporations and take them down. There's like gray hat ones who have kind of good kind of reasons for the things that they do, even though there's some malicious intent as well. And there's white hat people who are like, I need to find a job. And the best way to find a job is to find a security hole in this company that I want to work for and then use that as a way to get in and say, like, I found a, a thing in your hole. Hire me and, and, you know, I can help you fix all of the problems in all of your systems from then on. And you wouldn't have to, you know, you wouldn't have to, like, worry about these things anymore because I'll, I'll help you find them. There's various different reasons for people doing this stuff, you know. And they have a convention every once every year in, in this fine city of Las Vegas, Nevada, <laughs> where, they, where they all come together and they all report all the crazy shit that they found in all these, all these systems. And there's yeah. plenty of them plenty of them that they report every fucking year um this idea that you can just make an exception uh or that um you know that these zero day exploits are only you're only going to have them they're not they're just fucking not <laughs> people they will be found and the nsa is the biggest vulnerability because they have all these tools and they keep getting leaked all the time what was what was that one that happened just recently. Uh, with, um, I, with the Windows I can't remember what it was called. And it affected like every uh, hospital system. Uh, it was, I can't remember the, the name of it, but uh, basically what they did was they took these NSA uh, hacking tools and used them to create a worm that uh, was spreading from computer to computer. It was using... Um, Windows uh, operating system, and which, it which was Windows installing. Hmm? Uh, I was uh, in uh, old versions of Windows. Okay. I think it was like XP and below. Um, I think it was, or maybe it was yeah, XP. I yeah, this happened like months ago, but uh, it was installing uh, Crypto Locker um, viruses. So it's it's the type of thing that's like you know, uh, you get screen and says your data is encrypted unless you send x amount of bitcoin to this address within a certain time period it's going to be locked forever um in this was it hit the nhs uh in the uk and it's like this and the people who did it amateurs too of uh, that but because they had these sophisticated tools for an exploit that the nsa found and didn't tell microsoft about there yeah. but they kept it secret so they could use it they could use that that attack that which which of course leaves everyone vulnerable mm -hmm. um so it's just it's it's absolutely ridiculous the, the nsa is is just a frighteningly evil and dangerous organization and to make it worse, way more the, dangerous than people understand yeah the fda has regulations that say if you have a computer system, you like have to like get it like registered with the FDA anytime there's any kind of update. So if you update your computer system, it has to be approved by the FDA mm. for your for medical records. So what they do is they set up a system, they make sure that it's secure at the time, you know, they put it in Windows XP and then they just use it indefinitely because it's too expensive to update it for security exploits. That so may come stupid. down the line, which is fucking retarded. Yeah. <laughs> so God, yeah, it's so dangerous. If you're using Windows XP, like you are an idiot. <laughs> like you're asking for identity theft. You're asking for your business to be completely compromised. Mm -hmm. And it's not because XP was exploitable at the time it came out. It's just that they can't. Like it's just not being updated anymore. Well, I think they updated it for that particular exploit. I think they. It, they did update it, yeah. but um, then you're relying on people installing the update, though, because yeah. it's exactly what you're saying is that it's too expensive. You know, you get these these organizations that just don't care, don't want to, uh, or the process for for getting through the loopholes internally is just is too difficult. So they don't. So even though 
Microsoft has done its best to to patch this vulnerability, you're relying on people using Windows XP still <laughs> to update that. And they're they're using like, Windows XP. Yeah, and they're using Windows XP that that shows you their history of wanting to update things. Right. Uh, so <laughs> you're talking about you're talking about a, an operating system that's what almost 19 years old now. Oh fuck, was it 2000 wow. that it came out? Yeah, it was early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. Yeah, that that's that's quite a while. That's quite a while to wait for an update. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and by the way, like, there's tons of zero day exploits on all of your computer systems. Nothing is safe, and nothing. Yeah, nothing is truly safe. You can be safer than <laughs> than. Like you, you don't have to make it easy for for hackers, but yeah, there's there's no Oof. is impregnable. Yeah. Um, but what you can do is you can make it expensive. That's the best thing you can do is if you're going to use the internet, wear a condom. Use use a VPN. VPN. Uh, if you're going to talk, like if you're going to tell your friend, like, hey, uh, let's go out for for uh, for for lunch later. The best thing you can use is Signal, and you want to have those kinds of information like protected. Like I remember, we met some some libertarian guy uh, at one of our little hangouts. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have time to talk about Michael Malice, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> but we we had like the, the, uh, the thing, and I was like, hey, like we we like, let's talk on uh, on the Signal, and he thought like, oh, like. What are we going to talk about? We're we going to talk about like where we can get find drugs and all this stuff. And like the first thing I said is like, okay, so next month we're going to be meeting at Aces and Nails, and we're gonna we're gonna have it at this time. And um, and he was like, I thought we were going to talk about like crazy stuff. That's why we're we using Signal. I was like, no, you don't understand. The reason why we're using Signal <laughs> is to is to like to to make sure that like if they do spend the effort and time and money to crack it, all they're going to find is us talking about like, hey, where are you going to eat tomorrow? So just you know, us talking about where we're going to eat tomorrow is none of their fucking business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if fucking if business. and if you only talk about like really bad things while you're on by while you're behind that. Um, it's just going to make their job easier because now they're going to go, oh, okay. So they're talking about all the good stuff on Facebook Messenger uh, and and Twitter Messenger. We can have access to that, no big deal. But they keep only talking on certain times at certain places with certain people, uh, you know, you know, at, on, on Signal. But any other time, they're talking to these same people on this stuff. Like they must be talking about something terrible. It's going to be a big red flag for them. So. <laughs> always talk to them about that stuff so that way you're making it expensive for them to get to that part where you actually are saying like hey man do you know where you can get some shrooms now you're now you're going to be even more protected but if the government wants to come after you no matter what you're using no matter what you're using they're going to find you period right. of story it's and it's not just if you make them sufficiently angry or what the reason is they'll come up with something mm -hmm. Like you obviously don't make it easy for them, no. but <laughs> when governments get seriously pissed off at someone, they it, the laws, the you know, they're all this like due process. None of that fucking matters. Yep. Nope, it doesn't matter at all. And they and they have a really good constitutional way of getting around it. What they do is they go, okay. We're going to gather all this information about you that you're committing illegal acts and we're going to gather it illegally. But since we can't use it because it's not admissible in court, we're just going to use it as a basis to understand that you are doing something illegal and then go through legal routes in order to gain that inf that same information. Gonna, yeah, it's called parallel construction. Yeah. And then we're yeah. And then get get you. That's how they got Ross Ulbrich. They got, that is absolutely how they got Ross Ulbricht yeah. was was and the NSA specifically yeah. allegedly also, um, allegedly the, allegedly he did things allegedly mm -hmm. covering bases so, yeah. so the um, <laughs> oof he, oh you I can't remember you, I think you you cut out a bit say that again kind of meandering with I wasn't saying anything important at the moment but um, <laughs> the DNC I can't, I think it was the DNC. Uh, hack the way that they determined that it was like uh russian actors who actually did that hack 
um, uh, from what I understand, I didn't read the report, but uh, my friend Perry, who's a security expert, was telling me he's like, it's kind of a tour de force, like, uh, like technically how they accomplished this. And he's like, and there's no way that the NSA was not involved. Like, there's no way that the NSA was not involved in providing this information on who who attacked the DNC servers. Hmm. Telling you, they won't say that's how they gathered the information. Yeah. So this is a case where it's like they are provided with information in a means that, uh, you know, that is essentially obtained illegally, not in anything that could uh, stand up in court. And then they go and find a way to construct a narrative of how they obtained that same evidence or similar evidence. They know what to look for now. Yep. And where um, to find it to, to get the case in through legal means. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody always makes mistakes because we're humans and we're not perfect. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Of course, unless uh, unless you're a furry, s s Sonic, or a person at that point, though. Shadow the Hedgehog. No, no. If you're a Shadow the Hedgehog wannabe, uh, everything. Are you familiar with Bowsette? <laughs> I've I've seen stuff about this. I ha I haven't dug into it too deep. It's amazing that that you that you probably know more about Bowsette than you do about Kavanaugh. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, memes tend to be a lot more relevant to my life, so I I do happen to know about the the female version of Bowser this from is Mario. What this is what matters. You should only pay attention to things that matter, okay? <laughs> you should never pay attention to anything that doesn't matter. Oh, by the way, did you hear the new Star Wars movies coming out? Go ahead. <laughs> Lying. <laughs> More important than dank maymays. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Fuck Michael Malice. We should talk about Star Wars. <laughs> hey, Solo. I didn't see the last one. I didn't see it either. And I'm not... And I... And I I know it's out in like the high resolution versions and I'm just not interested in watching it. I just can't drive myself to care and plan nine from, from, from star space, star Wars space. I'm just not interested in watching either. I'm, but I'm probably going to see it. No anyway, interest just out, in and probably just, just morbid curiosity. I might go see it. I know I'll, I will definitely still go and see it just out of curiosity, but I've, I, it's like Jedi to completely kill my interest in Star Wars yeah. was bizarre, but let me let me just say fondness for the old movies, and I like the prequels because they're a meme gold mine. But mm -hmm. like, I can't believe Disney just absolutely obliterated my interest in like the most important cultural touchstone of my childhood. <laughs> and you would think that Disney would be good about preserving your childhood because they're responsible. They're for a nostalgia yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they f they they can't manage because they're trying they're trying to to. To, to make a, this a cinematic universe out of Star Wars and it there there is a threshold of how much Star Wars people can handle there there yeah I, yeah you don't need to have it every year and also like I don't know how do you just fuck up like basic good versus evil high adventure stories yeah ridiculous and like I don't know I think they they kind of gambled with Ryan Johnson and it just blew up on them like that movie made a ton of money but everyone knew solo was not going to do well it didn't matter if it was good or not and for what i've heard it's actually a decent film mm -hmm. uh but did the last jedi so much that they weren't going to go and see whatever the next movie was yeah well the people didn't want their their expectations subverted yeah <laughs> but I, let me just say this because i i talked i praised the last jedi when it came out, but I'm I'm here to tell you right now that I was completely Phantom Menaced. Uh, if you don't know what that term means, uh, Phantom Menacing is like a phenomenon that I think what is it Chris Stuckman coined? I think he may have coined it. I don't know. I know he talks about it. Um, where it's like at first you go and see a movie because there's a lot of hype around it and everybody's mm -hmm. really kind of like expecting good things to come of it, and then you go and see it and in a state of denial you you love it. And then upon further reflection or uh, additional viewings, you start to realize, like, no, I was just suckered into a, a marketing machine and I didn't really enjoy this at all. And I'm trying to find justifications for why I like it. There's there's still parts of The Last Jedi that I found compelling. Like, I actually really enjoyed all the stuff between uh, Rey and Kylo Ren, you know, where they're, mm -hmm. like, speaking across space and whatnot. Like, uh 
manage to put like you know finally put some sexual tension back into into uh, star wars a little bit between them like that was really cool mm -hmm. i thought that was all great and compelling and then just literally the rest of the fucking story was so broken and full of holes the editing in the movie was really shoddy like there uh it's just everything else about it was so off-putting to me i hated you know how jaded and cynical luke skywalker was and everything and i was just like this is this is terrible <laughs> See, I I think I think it could I think the idea could work had someone actually like good wrote it and not just a hack and just let him Ryan turn Johnson in the is first a draft hack. and then just film it. <laughs> yeah, like they just because everything I liked... every, everything about the was the Force Awakens seemed to be like by a committee. Like we have to have a return was to fine with that <laughs> yeah but that's 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 what that was okay with me because i think that's what star wars needed to be it needed to be like hey guys remember to when make a safe movie you know yeah like remember when you were young and you went and saw star wars and you had that feeling we're going to recreate it for you to let you know that we can do it better than George Lucas could with the prequels. Yeah. Because that was a mistake. We're acknowledging that was a mistake. We're going to just remind you of just pure nostalgia. We're going to have lots of uh, fan, what is it, fan service and, and that sort of thing. That's what it needed to be, to remind people like, this is what, what it was like to go to see Star Wars. We understand why you like Star Wars. We're going to give you that thing. And then we're going to give you something different later on. I was okay with that. But then they just were like, okay, Ryan Johnson, do whatever you want. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. That was a mistake. And no, I like Ryan Johnson's other Ryan? movies. No. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, I think Looper is like an okay movie. That's another one that's just a, you know, full of plot holes, but it was fun mm -hmm. and I liked it. I love Brick. Um, I don't know what that is watch this actually you might hate it i don't know you should you should watch it and tell me what you think but um brick is basically this like uh film noir like uh private investigator story but uh, it's I told probably, i probably would in like a, uh, the setting of a high school so it's like this guy is navigating like the like the kind of underworld of these like high school cliques trying to solve a murder uh it's really entertaining um, I loved that. And so that's why I was like, oh man, yeah, get him. He'll, you know, he'll make a cool Star Wars movie. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I honestly think that they should just say like, okay, that was, that was, that was the first rough draft. We're going to try again. Uh, and then give it to Taika Waititi. If they wanted to make a funny Star Wars film. They could have just gave it to Taika Waititi because he could prove that he could do that already. Like he's he's well established as, as a good comedy thing. They wanted it to be more comedic. He's the perfect person to do that. He and he, and he's not a complete fucking hack. It would have been perfect for them he to handle. Who? What? What are you talking about? Taika Waititi. Yeah, what did he? What did he make? <laughs> he made uh, while we wait. Uh, what we do in the shadows, um, flight of the Concords, but he also did uh, Thor, Ragnarok. Both of those. What we do in the shadows is great. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that not too long ago, and I was like, oh fuck, I gotta watch this again. And I watched it again, and now that I'm talking about it, I want to see it again. <laughs> While we wait in the shadows is probably one of my favorite mockumentaries ever. It's 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 up there with uh, Trailer Park Boys easily. I think he's I think it's actually better than uh, Trailer Park Boys. I'll say it. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, in terms of mockumentary, it, it's better than yeah. I'll say it. It's better than any any anything uh, Trailer Park Boys. And not I'm not saying anything bad about Trailer Park Boys. It's fucking great. I'm just saying that's how good it is. It's is, just yeah. how good it is. It's even better than that. Um, yeah, and he did a really good job with Thor Ragnarok. Took it some interesting places. It subverted my expectations, but in a good way. It wasn't just like, oh, look at me. I'm going to pour a glass of wine. Nope. I'm just going to pour it all over the table. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Letter Media summed up that fucking movie very well in three seconds. <laughs> I just fucking love it. Uh, anyways. So, Plan 9 from, from, uh, from Star Wars Space... Have you heard about what they're going to do now? Now that Ryan, or Ryan, 
fucking J.J. Abrams, what J.J. Abrams is going to do to try to repair it. Have you heard about no. any of this stuff? So, of course, um, Carrie Fisher passed away, and General Ortega, or Princess Leia, uh, wasn't written out of the movie. She didn't die in the movie, so she still lives in the movie. But they have to figure out yeah, a way to... Yeah, they're going to use un- unused scenes from The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jedi, right? Yep. And The Last Jedi. So they're going to use unused footage from those movies and try to make it so it works in this previous movie. Now, there was another attempt to do a similar thing in another movie. Um, and it was a movie called Plan 9 from Outer Space. And it was directed by... Um, D. Wood Jr. Yeah. Ed, Ed Wood. Uh, which he's legendary for being like the Tommy Wiseau of his day. And Tommy Wiseau was the guy who did The Room, one of the worst film directors of all time. So was Ed Wood. He was he was the considered to be the worst director of all time before like he got some really good competition. <laughs> uh, well, uh, but anyways, he did the same thing with Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi had passed away. He had some previous he had some old footage of Bella Lugosi from other films that he created, and he wanted to make this movie. And have Bella Lugosi as the star, quote unquote, of the movie. Um, but since he passed away, he just was like, we're just going to take this old footage and just kind of uh, railroad it in somehow. <laughs> just kind of cram it in and try to see whether or not if it works. And it didn't work. Um, and then made Plan 9 from Outer Space. And that was Bella Lugosi's last movie. Um, and that's basically what they're going to do with Princess Leia. And it's going to be a fucking nightmare. It'd probably be a better idea. Movie is, is worth watching is is Ed Wood by um, Tim Burton. Probably it's like best Tim Burton movie ever. Fight me. Ed, it's really really good. It's yeah. back when Tim Burton was like weird and quirky, mm-hmm. but it was like that weird quirkiness was in service of a story and not just like in service of being quirky and or you know like, <laughs> like the weird the stupid weird shit that he makes now that's just like it's weird that's cool right yeah you <laughs> like my goth aesthetic look at more but you know what every time he makes a movie i go and see it and i'm happy with the aesthetics and i just go for the aesthetics and i hate the fucking movie but i'm like ah, but it looked awesome <laughs> like, that's all i care about right everything looks everything has to look like a uh, beetlejuice and <clears throat> nightmare before christmas now and even that's starting to kind of wane too, because the, the new Alice movies—they look terrible. Oh. It just looked like someone vomited on the screen. Um, but anyways, yeah, like Ed Wood is great. Let's, let's shoot this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and and of course, that's that's the movie where we got the uh, uh, the line that we make fun of Jessica Parker, all Sarah Jessica Parker, all the time that she looks like a horse. That was the reason for that joke. That's right. No one would ever have called her a horse before then. <laughs> I, man, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I just watched that not too long ago. Anyway, and, I think I'm going to have to... Hmm? On my end. Oh, yeah. We should, we should probably wrap this up because the connection issues are going to be great, but uh, bad. But I watched that recently because I, because of the Disaster Artist when that came out, which, by the way, that was a good movie, too. It wasn't perfect, but um, it was a really good movie. And yeah. about another director who failed miserably <laughs> in the story behind that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, anything you want to plug? I'm sure you don't. Nope, nothing. <laughs> you need to get back on Twitter. Uh, okay, this is what I want to say to if if you have any of a younger libertarian demographic, uh, go pick up some some weights. That's what I want to say. Yeah, pick up some weights. <laughs> That's what I want to plug. And, and buy buy the starting strength book and just do a bunch of lifts. <laughs> there's there's another book that you can also lift, and it it'll it'll definitely result in some serious swelling. Uh, and that's Man Economy and State. And by the way, I I am not an Austrian. But I still recommend that book because it's a good fucking primer. <laughs> it's a good primer on how to understand economics. And even in my school of economics, we would say like, yeah, read that. But also, um, you got to empiricize it, dude. Sorry, my dude. I just... <laughs> you got to have some real world. <laughs> got to have some real world testing, my bruh. 
my dude. <laughs> but yeah, man, read Man Economy, Economy and State. Uh, they have audiobook versions of it, and sure, it gets kind of weird when you start getting into the graphs section uh, of the audiobook, but uh, it's good. Or, or Anything with charts on audiobook is odd. Yeah, or, or you can skip that and just read uh, Human Action, because there's no graphs in that book. Um, probably for be most better... people, though. Hmm? There's a lot of stuff in that. It's 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 a difficult. It's a more difficult read. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a it's a fun journey. It's a funner journey though. Yeah. <laughs> I just do have a lot of Scientology word clearing, and I'm definitely losing you. So you don't have to plug anything. You don't have anything to plug. I think you should get back on Twitter, my dude. There's lots of fun shit happening on Twitter, <laughs> and you're missing out on all of it. So negative though. I'm like just give me give me like my happy like review bra and like <laughs> just follow michael malice and and me and oh i do and uh <laughs> and review bra and you'll be all right by the way i should i should i should uh say i should end it with a, a tweet from michael malice what if kavanaugh was the real zodiac killer <laughs> what if he clearly is yeah <laughs> so, sorry ted cruz it's over you're a fraud. Anyways, uh, I'll talk to you later. I think we should do this more often. Uh, I think you cut out again. Anyways, I, I, I'll just I'll just say hell Satan for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hell Satan.